Hello everyone, my name is Katie Halloran. Um, I'm a senior biology major. I also major in alpha recognition and I'm in chemistry. Um, welcome everyone. Here is my presentation titled Light, Noise, Nesting, Relationships Between Human Habitat, Starting with Nest Site Preference and Fledgling Success in Habitat and Habitat Dolphins. So, what is the significance of bird habitat preferences? Why should we care what birds say? While urbanization is forcing these species to interact with humans more frequently, and deforestation is limiting the number of natural cavities available, which increases competition for nesting sites. And nest boxes are frequently placed near urban areas. So understanding the nest box preferences of cavity nesting species would help combat possible negative impacts of human interaction. So for our study, these are the species that we focused on. Um, these are blue and tree swallows. Both of these species are secondary cavity nesters found in open and semi-open habitats, including farms and suburbs. And they also have overlapping breeding ranges and seasons, which leads to competition for nest boxes in some areas. So eastern bluebirds are ground foragers, and they breed from late March to August. And previous population declines were due to habitat loss, but they have recently been turned around by conservation efforts, including nest boxes. Um, our other species are tree swallows, and they are aerial foragers, and they breed from late April to June. And they are true, they experience recent population declines, and they were possibly due to climate change. Uh, so we do have a lot of box competition, competition amongst these species, specifically at our sites. So limited natural cavity availability in urban areas increases competition for artificial nest boxes. And we see this trend for eastern bluebirds and tree swallows at our site specifically. So in this graph, you can see that this bar right here, this represents boxes that are used by both eastern bluebirds and tree swallows. These boxes over here are boxes that are only used by eastern bluebirds and tree swallows. And then these boxes over here represent the combinations of eastern bluebirds, tree swallows, and other tree swallows. So as you can see, competition is very high between eastern bluebirds and tree swallows. And here are the field sites that we looked at. Um, the first site is Bissett Park. Uh, we have 19 nest boxes there, and it's a community park, and those boxes are located along the Riverside Trail. Um, our next field site is Seiru. Um, we have 20 nest boxes, 21 nest boxes there. And it is primarily farmland, but there is a small meeting center in the back. So that does bring a small amount of traffic in. Um, and those boxes are placed along gravel road. Our next study site is Wildwood Park. We only have three boxes there, but um, it is a community park and there is pretty heavy vegetation and there are some wetland areas. Uh, and those boxes are located off of a paved pathway. So as you can see, this box right here, this is one of the three, and this is located near that main road that passes Wildwood. So this does see a lot of human activity. Um, our fourth study site is our residential area, which is a neighborhood that we have 10 nest boxes in. There's a moderate amount of green space there, and most of the boxes are located in the front, back, and side yards of houses. So as you can see, this nest box right here, this is located in a side yard of a house. And our last study site is our campus area, which is located on our campus here at Radford. And if you guys, if you guys have heard of the alumni garden, it is in there, which is pretty much just a small garden with some rich flora. And you can't really tell, but the nest box is right behind this brick structure right here. So we have been conducting this research since 2019, and here are our previous hypotheses. So for 2019, we expected that both eastern bluebirds and tree swallows would prefer nest boxes in environments that allow access to resources while minimizing predation risk, interspecies conflict, and human interference. And in 2020, after we gathered some results from 2019, we shifted our hypothesis and we predicted that tree swallows will tolerate boxes with more nearby human activity and prefer boxes with less canopy cover compared to eastern bluebirds. And we thought this because tree swallows are aerial foragers, so it makes sense that they would prefer boxes with less canopy cover compared to eastern 
liberals. We also predicted that tree swallows would tolerate more ambient noise associated with human activity more than use of bluebirds because we did find them to tolerate more human activity in our 2019 reports. And since ambient noise is also associated with human activity, we assumed that they would prefer or tolerate less ambient noise and human activity. So here is what we did for our 2019 and 2020 studies. In 2019, we started with 16 different nest box and environmental features which you can see in this graph over here. But we ended up focusing our analysis on five variables that had sufficient variation across boxes. And you can see those outlined in red here. Um, and two of these variables came out to be significant in their relationship to species boxes, which were canopy cover and human activity. So in 2020, we increased our sample size to 54 boxes by adding an additional field site, Cleveland Farm which is located in Blacksburg and is very similar to Staple. Um, and we looked further into canopy cover and human activity since those were the significant variables that were from 2019. And we then shifted our focus to be predominantly human disturbance related factors. So we included an additional variable ambient noise because that is associated with human activity. And our results from 2019 and 2020 are here. Uh, 2019, we found that tree falls were more tolerant of boxes with high human activity, while bluebirds avoided these. We also found that tree falls preferred less canopy cover. And then in 2020, we once again found that tree falls preferred less canopy cover, and eastern bluebirds were less tolerant of human activity, which followed previous trends. But then we had an unexpected positive trend between tree falls and C weighted noise. There was no relationship with A weighted measures, but this was a very unexpected positive trend. And for reference, C weighted noise um, is basically just frequencies that are low frequencies. A weighted measures just exclude low frequency noises. Uh, so for this year's study, uh, we included 55 nest boxes across five study sites visit, Salem, Wildwood, the residential area, and the campus area. And we excluded Kentland due to a lack of variation in focal variables. They were all of the variables were pretty much homogeneous across all of Kentland. They pretty much all had no canopy cover, no human activity, etc. And we decided to add an additional variable that's also associated with human activity, which is artificial light at night. So these were the environmental variables that we focused on this year. Uh, canopy cover, we measured by just taking an iPhone and we downloaded this app called Percentage Cover, and we just placed it above the box and we took a picture and the app calculated the percent canopy cover for us. And then for human activity, we recorded foot, motor vehicle, and non-motor vehicle, uh, vehicle traffic within a 20 meter radius of the box for 30 minutes. And if people stayed within that 20 meter radius, they were recounted every minute that they were in that radius. And for ambient noise, we used a sound level meter and we recorded minimum and maximum frequency for both A and C weighted frequencies in each cardinal direction and then averaged them for both ways. And for artificial light at night, we used a sky quality meter and we took measurements in each cardinal direction and over top of the box. And we averaged all those measurements for each box. Um, so our hypothesis for this year, uh, we expect to see a similar trend to previous years. Uh, we expect that tree falls will prefer less canopy cover and tolerate more human activity, ambient noise and light and disturbed birds. And our dependent variable, nest box use, was determined by regular nest box monitoring during the breeding season, and all nest attempts by each species were reported for each box. As for data analysis, it is currently ongoing, um, but there is a fair amount of variance that is not explained by our variables. And in our analysis with the 2020 data only, canopy cover was the only variable that came out significant, and both species preferred to be lower, which was really odd. And here's the graph that shows it. But this is really odd because in previous years, we saw that tree swallows preferred less canopy cover, and it made sense because.
because they are area of origin. So this is a very odd result. But we do expect to conduct more detailed analyses to further explore the data in combination with previous year. And we also would like to look more closely in the competitive species because we have been seeing a lot of activity from cow sparrows, wrens, chickadees, et cetera, just other competitor species, particularly in our um, neighborhood study site. And we, we possibly think that this may have something to do with our Eastern River and tree swallow box preferences. And we also hope to explore the effects of box age because we do have a lot of brand new boxes that have been put up. And there could be some variable there where Eastern bluebirds and tree swallows are hesitant to use new boxes if they don't know the box, if they're not familiar with it, if they haven't used it before. So, yeah, we expect to look into that. And that's it. I don't have a question slide either. So, any questions? I actually will be completely honest, I have no idea. It will probably change their breeding seasons and how many to see of them in each you know phase of the breeding season, but I'm not too sure yet. In, in, in 2021 or 2020? That was the that was the 2021 results. Yeah, yeah. We we don't know. We're going to look more into that. Was the kind of the only analysis that we have gotten from them so far. So we're going to look more into that and any boxes data from uh, previous years that is just 2020 boxes data. So we'll look more into that and figure out that because it, it is kind of weird. Um, for your human activity and ambient noise variables, did you measure this at multiple times in a day, multiple, like different days of the week and like average them together? How was that 30 minute? Yeah. So we, um, we had a specific protocol. We would only take these measurements uh, at a certain time of day. And we would, it, obviously we would have to take multiple days because we have so many boxes that we couldn't just do it all in one day. But we would make sure that it's the same time of day and we would take three rounds of measurements during the breeding season, so like June, July, August. <laughs> They're just a box. The, the birds will come and they make their nest in the box to get food from there. And then if, once a new bird comes, they clean out that and make their own and go on top of it. <laughs> Like if there's already a pre existing box that that deter them or maybe want them to guess there, is that what you're asking? But no, it's just you put like you can use couple flyers to use the box by the time that you put in the box. Oh, I see what you're saying. But if you're in the box, does that have an effect on which type of bird it is or any way to figure out that type of thing? Um, we don't put anything in the boxes. They have their own materials. I think if we did that, it would, it probably would cause particular species to nest in those boxes because different species make their nests in different ways. Like if we were to put a bunch of moss in a box, a chickadee would probably go their nest there because they eat moss. But you'd be surprised how quickly they build their nest. Like you could, you could, you could check one box one day and there'll be nothing in it. And then the next week there's a Full Do I have any data on the material that they use to build their nests? That they could use? Um, no, but they pretty much always make it out of the same thing. But it is normally like it's either sticks or pine needles and stuff like that, or if we're kind of in an urban, more urban area, they they sometimes use trash too. It's kind of funny. Um, I am not 
particularly sure when I first ran that 2019 study that I showed where it had all of those nest box variables um, here, I, I tried to look at the environmental conditions around it. So like the species of folks free and like the herbs and stuff like that around it, that kind of stuff. And that really had no effect on what species we could find. <laughs> So they, um, they're happy nesters, they're secondary happy nesters, so they like to, they like to make nests in spots that are just already a cavity. So if we didn't have these nest boxes, they would be making their nests in, say, trees, like holes in the trees and stuff like that. And that's why this is becoming such an important thing, because we're running out of trees. <laughs> And the competition is getting really high for actual natural cavities. It actually changes. In fact, this year we saw a lot more changes in the stars. But no. <laughs> <laughs> All the time, and that's that's actually why we want to look into um, competitor species and all of that is affecting these species because there are the um, the nest boxes. I should have included a picture of the nest box, that we used, but the holes are pretty much about that big, and not many different species can get in them. They only have a few competitive species that are able to use those same boxes. Um, but when that does happen, we exclude that from our nest box monitoring. Like we, you know, we check and we keep track of their nest progress and their the budget success and their flood size and all that. We just kind of exclude that from our data. All right. Any questions?